The Cube at Big Data SV 2014 is brought to you by headline sponsors WAN Disco. We make Hadoop invincible and Actian, accelerating Big Data 2.0. Okay, welcome everyone to Silicon Angle and Boogie Bonds the Cube, our exclusive coverage of Silicon Valley Big Data, Big Data SV, as we call it, hashtag Big Data SV. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. I'm joined by my co-host Dave Vellante for three days of live coverage starting now. The world of big data is happening here in Silicon Valley. We have all the coverage and analysis, news, opinions, and commentary here on theCUBE as always. And uh, also coverage from the Strata Conference happening right across the street. Big data is happening right here. And uh, pleased to bring you exclusive wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Uh, my co-host Dave Vellante, this is theCUBE. We extract the ceiling from the noise. And Dave, uh, this is, I mean, our Fifth conference with big data, Strata. It seems like a, like a more than John. I think I think we started what uh, 2010, the end of 2010. You know when everybody was asking what is Hadoop, and we were answering that question. I asked that question of you, you know, years ago, and you explained it to me. You said it's the next big thing, and and it has certainly become the next big thing. Although John, I think we're you know seeing the slow maturity of of, of Hadoop. Right, there's still a lack of applications. We're seeing um, a lot of partnerships announced this week. You know, we're here at Big Data SV. It's concurrent with uh, O'Reilly Strata. We're seeing a lot of partnerships announced. Not a lot of whole new innovations. We're going to talk about that today. Is that a sign of what uh, Merv Adrian at Gartner calls the trough of disillusionment? He says that's progress because we're going from left to right. Um, but, you know, questions remain. Uh, you know, we came out this week. Jeff Kelly quantified the size of the big data market. You know, it's big, as we said. But the interesting thing to note, John, is still dominated by a lot of the whales. IBM, HP, you see Dell in there, you see Teradata. So where are the startups? You know, Palantir is the, is the biggest startup there. Where, where are Cloudera? Where are Hortonworks? I think we're going to start seeing those guys in 2000. So at the end of this year and into 2015, start to break out. You're probably going to see some IPOs, but you know, right now, it's sort of all quiet on the Western front. Well, we're going to have a live coverage here on SiliconAngle.tv. Go to SiliconAngle.tv. You'll see our new Cube page there, which we just pushed this week. We're, we're psyched to have that. We're going to start breaking down all the events, and we're indexing all the videos so you can actually watch every single tidbit. We're tagging it so you can get the sound bites. If you don't have time to watch the videos, you can go in there and dig in and, and tweet out the epic moments, the, the, the sound bite, the epic tweet, the epic crowd chat. And of course, this year we'll be adding a new element, our crowd chat product to us, go to crowdchat.net slash SV and join the crowd. We have open source crowd commentary to augment the cube and strata conference coverage here in Silicon Valley. And we're going to also bring in analyst Jeff Kelly who's going to join us. Jeff, um, great to see you. I know you've been really busy, so thanks for taking the time to, uh, to join us. I know you're out doing the lunches. Big news, um, yesterday you dropped your big data uh, report again for the third straight year, constantly getting up there, the road to $50 billion uh, total of adjustable market, or TAM as Dave says. Um, great feedback, it's, it's the trending item on Twitter around Strata Conference and Big Data SV. And uh, Silicon Valley's on fire, a lot of new startups. Tell us what the report is saying, tell us what you're hearing on the ground, new trends, what's game changing, what's business as usual. Well, what, what the, uh, the research and the report tells us is the market is, is growing um, somewhat to, to on, along the trend line we forecast you know, two years ago. Um, so up to about $18.6 um, billion dollars, uh, in 2013. Uh, that's going to grow at a rate of about, well, that's a 58% growth rate over last year. Uh, we're going to see a similar growth rate, probably a little bit slower next year. But still, it's growing fast. Um, you know, as Dave mentioned, there's a lot of the IT heavyweights uh, kind of leading the market right now, and that's um, you know for a few different reasons. One, mostly around the hardware and the services uh, part of the market. Um, companies like IBM and HP, uh, even Dell, with a, from, from a hardware perspective. Um, but there's what a great ecosystem of startups, um, and you know it's almost. I guess we still have to call them startups. They've been around. You know, a lot of these companies five, six years now. Companies like uh, HortonWorks and Cloudera and MapR and others. So. Um, but it's a really interesting mix, and now we're finally starting to see some of these companies start to grow up, and uh, it's really interesting to watch. So Jeff, you've seen a lot, of course, all the innovations in software, but software in this market, you know, it started out in this market, the software was free, and you pointed out in your report that that has somewhat suppressed the software revenues, but you're starting to see some of these companies, you know, bubble to the top. Um, 
But as you say, you, you still see you know, Oracle, Teradata, IBM, you know, HP Dell, of course, because it sells a lot of hardware. You know, yeah, it's mm -hmm. got some big data stuff, but you don't really consider them sort of a, you know, pushing the, the market for big data. But where are all the sort of software startups? Obviously, you see Splunk and, and Tableau mm -hmm. uh, have done IPOs, very successful. But, you know, where are some of the core big data startups? Some of the, what we used, you know, talk about as pure plays. Right. Where are those guys at? Well, the pure plays, so let's take this from a couple different angles. So you've got the Hadoop pure plays that we uh, have been covering for years. You've got Cloudera, Hortonworks. Uh, and MAP are really the, the three kind of competitors that have been in this market the longest um, and really you're kind of battling it out for that pure play uh, Hadoop uh, mantle, that title. Um, you know, so we're seeing companies like Cloudera you know, hit 70 million plus revenue last year. Hortonworks hitting over 50 million. So these companies are starting to grow. Uh, MAP are over 30 million. So um, they're starting to actually uh, accrue some significant revenue. Um, you know, that's where some of the software uh, is starting to catch up with the hardware. So a lot of these companies, um, you know, would initially, you know, they have a lot of users, a lot of downloads, but there are a lot of free downloads. Uh, in Cloudera's case, for instance, you know, you can download CDH for free, deploy it on, your, on uh, some, some cheap boxes from Dell, uh, and off you go, doing some experimentation. Uh, but now people are starting to actually move into production deployments, or at least thinking about it, and are starting to engage companies like Cloudera and Hortonworks for support contracts, for uh, more enterprise grade uh, support and availability, uh, high availability, things like that. Um, so finally, we're starting to see them uh, generate some significant revenue. Um, from the NoSQL space, companies like MongoDB are doing well, um, data stacks. So all these companies are starting to, uh, who have the freemium model, um, based on open source software, they're finally starting to kind of catch on in terms of a revenue perspective. And, and Pivotal has now jumped up because the EMC took the collection of misfit toys, pulled them out of VMware, pulled them out of EMC, <laughs> threw them into Pivotal, and all of a sudden, boom, you have this $300 million company on the scene. Yeah, so it's technically how, a startup, right? Yeah, so, well, so my question is, okay, how much of that is is real, how much of it is, you know, just bits and pieces coming together? Where is, is Pivotal? I mean, you see $300 million, you say, wow, that's a big number, all of a sudden it's you know, surpassed some of these other companies that we talked about. How, wh where is that all coming from? Well, it's a real number, uh, but the re most of the revenue is coming from their uh, Green Plum line and from their Gemfire line. So, uh, and not necessarily deployed, or certainly not deployed, um, kind of in the larger Pivotal platform. Still selling them somewhat as point products. Um, but I think Pivotal and the kind of their owners of the EMC understood that was going to be the initial you know, revenue base of this company. Um, you know, they're at very early days. They have a kind of a, what I would call a grand vision of really building out this three-layer platform, the, the infrastructure, the, the pass layer, and then the data fabric, as they call it. So, you know, they've got a ways to go before they really um, make that hardened and really uh, enterprise ready. And they've got to do a lot of work with partners. It requires a lot of cloud, it requires cloud partners to really, to really um, realize their vision. So they've got a long way to go there. Um, but they've still got this revenue base, and that's not so, totally a bad thing. That gives them some, some, a little bit of room to play with. So, John, it seems to me that the, the, the guys who win the developer community are the guys who are going to win this end game. I mean, what are your thoughts on, on this whole thing? Well, Dave, I put a, uh, a question out on the crowd chat, and I think ultimately Silicon Valley is leading the charge right now in, in terms of technology innovation. We're seeing, as we had big data NYC in New York, you're seeing much more of the meat on the bone kind of approach where it's like, hey, proof is in the pudding, the financial services market drives a lot of value. But here in Silicon Valley, it's really about the startups and the emerging categories. So to me, the top couple clusters are, 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 of, of audience or crowd, crowd spots, if you will, are data science, the database app kind of developer, that's the Mongo, that's the NoSQL, that's the NoSQL, that's the database market. Then you've got uh, Hadoop, which by itself is, is, a, is a revolution. That speaks to the open source software developer. That's the, more the open source. That'll span Spark and a variety of other new projects like Storm. Really classic. That bleeds into the Red Hats of the world. That's a core community. And then finally you get the legacy vendors like um, the IBMs, the, the Informaticas, the Oracles, HPs, guys who are trying to get their foot back in the door. These are the guys with the fast followers coming in off the innovators. And then finally, in the new emerging category that Jeff Kelly and I were uh, discussing, that Jeff pointed out, kind of teasing his report, but we'll see more data coming in this next year. That is a new emerging school of applications, new modern era kind of thinking like BI, data warehousing, reinvented. So these are paradigm shift, these are disruptive approaches, these are new, new approach to big data. This will impact you know, anything from the Internet of Things to 
software. And so, again, data science, database app developers, Hadoop, legacy, and then this emerging category that we are watching very, very closely, where big data is native in all aspects of the computing software fabric. So, to me, that's what we're going to watch this, this uh, event. And obviously, we have all the, all the usual suspects coming through, talking about more of the same around enterprise grade, security, um, BI, et cetera. So that's exciting. Jeff, your take on, on, on that, and I want to get your thoughts. You were talking about this emerging area. We connect the dots of some of the things that you're looking at around the corner. Well, we're, as I said, we're still at very early days, but you mentioned the industrial internet, for example. So we're going to have GE on uh, tomorrow. I'm going to come on and talk a little bit about their strategy there. But this whole idea of connecting physical devices, physical objects, um, through data, uh, and then building applications that actually um, help those devices perform more efficiently, uh, to essentially orchestrate processes across operational environments uh, that are, so they're more efficient and actually help people in their everyday lives, whether it's healthcare or energy, transportation. Um, so that's really an interesting area uh, from my perspective um, that really has an opportunity to, to impact you know, the larger world, not just kind of the, uh, the smaller world of you know, IT and, and enterprise tech. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind and, and, and watch. Um, you know, the other thing from, from a market perspective that struck me this year, or I should say in 2013, as I was doing my research and uh, working on this report that we just published, um, I think the critical thing that happened last year is that Hadoop and some of the other big data application frameworks and other um, open source components started to continue to mature, uh, that's a given, um, but the way they did it uh, was focused around things like, I think the biggest news was Yarn, um, and the idea of making Hadoop uh, a multi-application framework. Um, and kind of complementary to that was all the work, all the integration work that a lot of the larger legacy vendors that you just mentioned, John, um, work that they're doing uh, kind of to bring Hadoop into the, into the fold. So I think last year was an important year for Hadoop, uh, specifically big data generally, uh, in kind of validating uh, that you know, this is not a kind of a going to be relegated to, you know, kind of backroom data science. Um, big data, Hadoop, is going to play a very important role in the data, uh, data architecture of the future. I think that's what we saw last year with some of these developments. Um, they're still early days, and of course we have a long way to go in terms of bringing in uh, enterprise-grade features like security you mentioned, I think, is one of the critical ones that gets often overlooked. Um, privacy, um, all those not so exciting things like uh, metadata management and um, data integration, all those things have to play a role here. So, you know, those things are being built out, but to me what was important last year, the platform continued to mature. Uh, clearly, um, it's going to be a multi-application framework uh, when we're talking about Hadoop, and it's really been adopted and been uh, embraced by a lot of the larger legacy vendors. Um, so we're going to see next year and this year and next year going forward, um, I think these technologies starting to really uh, find their way into the enterprise. So we talked about uh, Pivotal as a relatively you know, sort of new name, of course, in, the, in, the, in your report anyway. Amazon was the other one hmm. that you mentioned quite a bit. You know, you, we weren't typically talking about Amazon in your report last year and at this, this, this event last year. But now we've got a situation where Amazon, you talked about cloud and, and big data continuing their love fest. Amazon has announced things like Kinesis. Uh, so it seems like it's a place for a lot of people to park their big data projects. What do you see going on with Amazon and big data? Yeah, I'd, I'd say it's a, it's a courtship right now. It's, it hasn't been consummated yet, um, to stretch the metaphor. So, you know, we're seeing cloud is a good uh, place for a lot of this test and dev, uh, building uh, initial applications, uh, basically testing them out, see how they work, see if they're going to deliver the results you expected. Um, you can go to Amazon and spin up, you know, a, cluster, a Hadoop cluster. You can load data into Redshift for some data warehousing. You can use things like uh, Kinesis for now for streaming data. So they have a, a, a really a, a fairly comprehensive uh, portfolio of services around the different types of data workloads. Uh, but the thing is, you're not seeing a lot of enterprise workloads really being moved to uh, to uh, the cloud, AWS specifically, and that's for a number of reasons. One, I mean, you've got data integration challenges, you've got security concerns, uh, you've got internal compliance uh, policies you've got to consider. So it's starting to, to it's, we're starting to see some movement there. Um, I think it's really interesting uh, what the, the opportunity that AWS offers to enterprises looking to get started with big data and build their first applications. Um, removes a lot of that complexity around deploying your own Hadoop clusters and things like that. Um, but it's still very early. And I think it's going to take some time before the cloud becomes 
a place where you're really going to bring your enterprise workload. It's going to be a place where you test new applications. Maybe you deploy some new applications, but uh, for full, full on production deployments that are supporting mission critical apps across you know large base of concurrent users, I think it's going to be a while before we see that. Dave, one of the things I wanted to go, we got some time limits here on our, on our intro segment, but you know, Silicon Valley is really the place we're going to be digging into here. We had big data NYC. Silicon Valley is really where the innovation center is here. Obviously the market's really on fire right now. Some say a bubble, um, but you know, we see the innovation. Obviously big data is kind of coming out of the trough of disillusionment. You started to see where the rubber meets the road. So in your opinion, your assessment of Silicon Valley, as we rise up into the trajectory in terms of the growth, you're starting to see the partnerships form. You're starting to see the fog lift in terms of you know, where the action is. And uh, what's your take, Dave? What, what's your take on the maturity the, uh, of, of big data and where the value propositions really being highlighted? Well, when I, when I get questions like that, uh, I, I always come back to the customer. So when you look at what the customers are actually doing, you know, they're still, as Jeff was saying, you, you know, okay, I'm not going to put my mission critical apps in the, in the cloud. Am I going to put them in Hadoop? So you're seeing the infrastructure still maturing. Uh, and so you still see a lot of, you know, when you talk to companies like, you know, Yammer or Facebook or Google or the internet guys, obviously they're, they're adopting. And there are examples of, of mainstream companies. You know, we've had guests on theCUBE, John, and, 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 and many others that are sort of experimenting and actually getting value out of big data, but it's still not hit the mainstream of the customer base. When you talk to CIOs, they're all talking about how they're transforming into being data-driven companies and, and the like, but they're still, the, the center of their data universe is still the data warehouse, it's still the traditional BI tools, and that is very slow to sort of break that pattern. And at the same time, you're seeing big companies like Oracle and IBM and others sort of hang on to that base like a big giant magnet. So, so, so Dave, I mean, one of the things you know, I'm seeing right here is obviously from the startup scenes kind of mellowed out a little bit. You're starting to see yeah. the big A rounds come in. So the, really the, the startup scene is very simple. You're seeing people getting funding, Certainly, uh, you're starting to see a lot of cloud action on there, but on the big data front, the, the startup action really is, is seed financing uh, to get going, and then ultimately, either they cross the chasm and they get the big series A round in and around the seven to $15 million range. What that does is causes a dynamic where the, the funding is the filter of success. So you see people getting about a million dollars, maybe $2 million in some seed funding, which kind of means like a series A, and then seeing what they could do with that because the ability to scale with big data with mobile and cloud is phenomenal. In order to do that, you know, the investors are looking for massive traction fast. If you're not having escape velocity in the, in the venture, um, then, you know, then you, will, you might not uh, make it. Or you'll be a nice little lifestyle business or small business, but the Series A rounds are between seven and $15 million as a funding vehicle, that's a new filter. So you're starting to see the real powerhouses emerge. So you're going to see a fewer winners coming out of that startup scene, in my opinion, and a lot more value propositions coming from there. And then you're going to start to see those guys who got funding two years ago that we covered here, starting to see what the traction points are. We're going to start to see a you know, platform, a continu continuity, you know, um, clear story. These are the companies that are hitting the, the table right now. They're in their B rounds, B, C financing, and you're going to start to see is that horse coming home on the home stretch? And that's going to be a big proof point. And of course, you have the big guys. You're going to see HP, you're going to see IBM, you're going to see the big whales coming in here, you know, kind of building a position, leveraging their customer base, and trying to be innovative. So again, it's the NASCAR race we always talk about. Which car is going to emerge out? And that's the dynamic of well, that's the market. That's a key point. Can they, can they do it with their customer momen momentum? They have, does the horse have any you know, gas left in the tank, as they say? <laughs> okay, this is the cue. We're going to be here live for three days. Uh, SiliconAngle.tv is the new site. Uh, the Cube on Twitter, I'm at Furrier, at D Vellante. Follow us, go to the crowd chat where we have crowdsourced commentary. Um, shout out to all our guys out there. We have uh, all the usual suspects back into the crowd chat. And when we have open questions out there, ask us anything. Use the crowdchat.net slash big data SV. Ask us questions, we'll respond to them. You know, we got uh, Tim Crawford out there. Hey Tim, saying a shout out to you. Great to see you in the crowd chat. Spread the word, let's bring in the crowd. We want to bring the crowd into the cube. We love extracting that signal from the noise, talking to the thought leaders, but we really want to have you guys part of the process. So if you're watching, go to crowdchat.net slash big data SV and be part of the conversation and part of the production. We'll be right back with our first guest here, kicking off day one 
of Strata Conference and Big Data SV right after this short break.